Okay, hey, what's happening all my dragonlings? I am your Dragon God of Gaming, Damien Dragon, and welcome back to another episode of Gaming News, where I run down the list of all the gaming news, facts, rumors, trivias, and everything coming out of the gaming industry this week. Now, today we have something on the ongoing lawsuit of ROM Universe. We also have something on the GTA Trilogy, which is going to be a weird one to go through, and we have some Nintendo games smashing at the moment. So, let's get straight into the episode, shall we? All right, we've got our thing here, so let's just, let's do this. Anyway, first off, let's start off with ROM Universe. I could not find a really good fucking uh, <laughs> picture for this, but this is the best we can because they're about to go extinct. Anyway, <laughs> If you guys don't know, I've talked about the ROM Universe lawsuit uh, about two to three weeks ago. And, yeah, it went downhill, and it went downhill fast. <clears throat> this is from Kotaku.com, and be very mindful that every piece of news we have today is coming from Kotaku. Yeah. Don't ask how that happened. Anyway, this is written by Zach Swizen. And he writes, Nintendo orders ROM site to destroy all its games or else. ROM Universe has to comply by August 17th, the court orders say. And it goes thusly. ROM Universe, a website where folks, mm, folks, 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 could download pirated copies of various Nintendo games and even pay a premium to get faster downloads, was sued into oblivion back in May of this year. But Nintendo wasn't done after suing the site for 2.1 million. In new court documents, a judge has ordered the owner of the site to destroy all of his Nintendo ROM or face legal consequences. ROM, ROM Universe was first sued by Nintendo in 2019 for what its lawyers called brazen and mass scale infringement. Nintendo won the lawsuit in May and was awarded $2.1 million in damages, which would be paid by ROM Universe. Matthew Storman in $50 monthly payments, at least in theory. However, in July, Nintendo returned to court after Storman failed to make its first $50 payments. The game publisher requested a permanent injunction against Storman as it feared for he might be willing to bring the site back online, and now they're more. As spotted by Torrent Freak, the judge has now granted Nintendo's injunction after taking another look at the case and the ongoing actions of Storman. The court has now ordered Dorman to permanently destroy all unauthorized Nintendo games or other unauthorized copies of Nintendo's intellectual property, including movies, books, and music. The judge has given Storman until August 17, 2021 to comply and until August 20th to file a declaration with the court verifying he had followed the judge's orders. If he fails to do so, he could face perjury and perjury charges. Oh boy. Also, a result of this new injunction filed like last week. Actual book? <laughs> I'm sorry I cut myself off in the middle of that, but there was just a gigantic fucking bang on my roof. And if you guys know anything uh, about roofs and um, trailer parks, they're not the most stable. So... What and who the fuck is on my roof? If, um... Okay, let me just say this for um, for the moment. Let's just say this. If uh, I have to get up out, out my chair for a moment in the middle of the recording, please be mindful that, um... I'm about to go and... You know, put somebody in a body bag. Let's just say that for um, for a definite. Anyway, filed late last week in U.S. District Court, Stormy can no longer distribute, copy, sell, or even play unauthorized Nintendo ROMs. He is also barred from using any Nintendo trademarks or logos. Truly, the website cannot catch a break from Nintendo, huh? And that about does it for that. I don't understand. Um, well, for me, I do understand. ROM Universe did not have the 
injunction to actually go out and to uh, be able to use Nintendo's intellectual property. I can understand that if you're going to be, um, you know, giving away it, it should be something from games or titles that you have personally purchased, which that is kind of the thing. If you're going to be selling ROMs, you have to have bought the game and take the take the code straight from the game. And if you didn't do that, then that's, yeah, that's you. But I've always said, and I still stick to my guns here, that um, if you're distributing it, yeah, you're going to have to own the game. But if you're the one grabbing up the title, then to be honest, you're really not in, in too much danger. Because again, you, you are not money? technically distributing. And I'm I'm a I'm a big user of ROMs. I do use some ROMs. But the problem with that being is that some people would look at me and be like, isn't that illegal? No. No it is not. It's illegal if I'm selling the damn thing. It'll be it'll be it'll be illegal if I personally went out and picked up a ROM and sold it. That's against the law. Playing it and playing it for more free and giving more light to the game is not against the law. So, there you go. And to be honest, I have played ROM games before and I have played them and I've made some money playing certain games. That doesn't mean I'm distributing it. I'm not telling you where to find them, nor am I, nor am I condoning anyone grabbing them up. So technically, not in any any way infringing on the law. But the problem with everything being is that Rom Universe did not have the license to be able to do that. So yeah, they kind of stuck, and he's kind of sticking to his gun by it's it's fifty dollars. I can understand that somebody that doesn't. Um, make as much money is, you know, in, you know, the crapper for that one, and I feel bad for the man, but also, all you gotta do is destroy the games, that's it, well, you still gotta pay the two hundred one million, so good, good luck with that, anyway, from one, uh, one game series, or, you know, set of games, to another set of games, we're going to be moving swiftly on from ROM Universe to Grand Theft Auto. Now, if you guys don't know, Grand Theft Auto, a, the, a remastered trilogy of games, appears to be it, it, it appears to be real, and it's actually coming to Switch. Yeah, this is from the literal same site and from the literal same person as the last one. So, Zach, thank you. And he says the GTA remastered trilogy appears to be real and coming to Switch. Rockstar is also bringing in the games to PS5, Xbox consoles, naturally. After months of rumors and speculation, Kotaku has learned from sources that Rockstar Games may be remastering three classic Grand Theft Auto games. It currently appears these games will be released later this fall for a multitude of platforms, including the portable Nintendo Switch. For the past year, rumors have swirled on Twitter, Reddit, and various message boards that Rockstar is working on remakes or remasters of or of classic PS2 era Grand Theft Auto titles. These rumors only grew in popularity as Rockstar's parent company, Take Two Interactive, used DMCA takedowns to remove classic GTA mods on the internet while announcing that the publisher had three remastered games in development. While Kotaku can't confirm with what all of these teased remastered titles specifically are, we can confirm via corroborating details from three sources that GTA Remastered are currently in the final stages of development. Kotaku has reached out to Rockstar about these remastered and future GTA releases. Our sources have so far have reliable track records that have alerted us to updates to in GTA Online and Red Dead Online weeks, if not months in advance. According to these sources, Rockstar is actively developing remastered versions of Grand Theft Auto 3, Grand Theft Auto Vice City, and Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. All three of these games are being remastered using Unreal Engine and will be a mix of, of new and old graphics. One source who claims to have seen a snippet of the games in action 
said that the visuals reminded them of a heavily modded version of a classic GTA title. The UI for the games are being updated too, but will return the that same classic, classic style. Easy. No details were shared about gameplay, but Kotaku has been told these master titles are trying to stay true to the PS2 era GTA games as much as possible. Sources confirmed that Rockstar Dundee, a Scottish outpost and one of the newest studios at the company, is leading the charge of developing the new remastered games. Another source explained that the studio is heavily involved in not just the remasters, but is all even helping Rockstar on developing the next-gen GTA 5 ports that are due out later this year. This line and this lines up with information I heard last year after the studio was purchased by Rockstar Games. Before becoming Rockstar Dundee, the studio was roughly in games and had previously worked on Crackdown 2, Crackdown 3, and assisted with development on the Master Chief Collection. I'm not going to read the entire thing because, Jesus, I actually have a stream in about 30 minutes that I need to get to. So, um, at this point, uh, Rockstar is actually going to be remastering these titles. And to be honest, why shouldn't they? Why shouldn't they? GTA San Andreas, GTA 3, and GTA Vice City are some of the most sought after games that you could possibly find. If you guys like the GTA series, these three games come to mind when it comes to the, one of the, from the top games in the GTA series. And yes, that's kind of the thing for us. Yes, we have GTA 5 now, but not many people want to relive GTA 4, but we do love the, the PS2 era games. And we really did enjoy um, G GTA 3, San Andreas, and Vice City. Why? Because they're not that good. I played all of those three, and I played them to completion. I don't play the GTA series, but I even went back and played the Vice City, San Andreas, and a couple of titles. I haven't recorded, recorded them. No, I have not. I have recorded GTA San Andreas, I'm not San Andreas, GTA 5 and uh, some variations, yes I have, but I have never sat back and said, yeah, this is how I want to be able to do this, and I want to be able to sit back and play these classic GTA games, because, oh my god, <laughs> if you play GTA Vice City, the most bloodiest weapon you can pick up is the freaking sniper. And I picked up a sniper a couple times and For just reals? destroyed, <laughs> which was fun to me. One of my favorite um, things was uh, GTA Liberty City Stories, and um, I didn't play Vice City Stories, but I did play Liberty City Stories, and I loved Liberty City Stories because one of the um, one of my fondest memories was the running up and like going around the entire thing, which he goes on. Yes, I played Chico's and uh, GTA. Who didn't? And I went around and they're in this car and just started running people over. And I love turning on the radio. And they had this um, story time, you know, radio channel, which was just just sat back and told a story. And I just, I could not stop listening to it. Anytime it come on, I was just like. Yeah. <laughs> I would sit there for just 20 minutes at a time listening to it. So, and, and, what do you guys think? Do you guys want to see more from the GTA, um, GTA trilogy? Do you guys want this, or should they just focus on development of GTA 7? To be honest, I think they should do both. <laughs> so, let's go. Let's go, Rockstar. Let's go. Cashing in those dubs, baby. You're cashing in those dubs. So, yeah. I feel like that's going to be the best thing for us. So, Kotaku, you've done your due diligence. We can't wait to see what we got. Anyway. Going back to Nintendo. Nintendo. And going in. Nintendo. <laughs> Nintendo games has always been very fun. I love playing the... Um, I love playing Nintendo, and I've been playing Nintendo games for basically my entire life. So, it comes to, it comes good to me that Kotaku had written an article about this, and this is written by Lisa Marie Sagera. Thank you so much. Nintendo's older games are killing it right now. 
Switch faves like Mario Kart 8, Breath of the Wild, and Smash Bros. are chart mainstays, which is dope. Nintendo continues absolutely dominating the competition in terms of game. Sorry, in, in terms of game sales. The Japanese Switch Maker had 8 of the top 20 best selling games in July 2021, according to analytics firm NPD Group, and most of those games aren't even new. The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. I wonder why Skyward Sword would be good right now. I believe I just got a remaster. Which just came out July. Yep. Take the top spot. Being out other new releases, Monster Hunter Stories 2, Wings of Ruin, and Neo, The World Ends With You. Complete Nintendo's entries to the top sales list were Mario Kart 8 in 4th place, the newer Mario Golf Super Rush at 6, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate at 10, last year's incredible hit Animal Crossing New Horizons at 12, Super Mario 3D World at 14, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild at 17, and finally the combined Pokemon Sword and Shield at 18. Oh, and uh, by the way, on my channel, I'm playing Super Mario 3D Land. So if you guys want to go check that out, I suggest go and watching my channel. Subscription, please. Thank you. And I have played Sword. Um, I have played Pokemon Sword, which I'm currently trying to. I like it. Okay. Um. What's truly astounding about these numbers, however, is that they don't include any of the titles online sales figures. NPD is normally able to pull data from both physical and digital sales, but all Nintendo's games are marked with asterisks denoting digital sales are not included. Even so, it shouldn't come as too much of a surprise considering the latest earnings report, which is positive to say the least. And it's we learned that more people are buying Mario Kart 8, which was first released all the way back on on you in 2014 over some of Nintendo's newest games. And while Animal Crossing New Horizons isn't selling quite well as it did last year, that's only because it did absolutely bonkers numbers in 2020. So yeah, Nintendo's doing pretty well. NPD's full ranking of dollar sales across all platforms for July is as follows. And I will actually read them out at the moment. So I'm gonna start from 20 to um I'm gonna start from 20 to uh number one. So number 20 is Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Number 19, Resident Evil Village. Go check out my series. It's still ongoing. So go check out Resident Evil Village, please. Pokemon Sword and Shield. Played it. It's really good. Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. I want to get to it. Neil, Neil, The World Ends With You at number 16, which I want to play. I've heard a good, a good amount of it, but I haven't played it. At number 15, Mortal Kombat 11, which I've played the beta. I just haven't gotten it. I haven't been able to uh, get back to it. It'll come. I promise. Super Mario 3D World. I've been playing Super Mario 3D Land. I want to play World. So, awesome. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 plus 2, which is actually very dope. I suggest go check out the Tony Hawk series. Uh, Animal Crossing New Horizons at 12, which is very dope. I want to get Animal Crossing New Horizons myself. Uh, 11, Ratchet and Clank, oh, Rift Apart, which I love to see. You, you love to see your boys getting in. Uh, number 10, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Never in any doubt that it will crack the top 10. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2019 at number 9, which, okay, very dope. Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales, which is still coming, don't worry. Number 7 is MLB The Show 2021, of course it is. Number 6 is Mario Golf Super Rush, okay, dope. Number 5, Minecraft, a... Number 4, Mario Kart 8, okay. Number 3, Monster Hunter Stories 2, Wings of Ruin, okay, dope. Number 2, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, awesome. And number one, the highest performing game of July, The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. More than likely the HD remake. Which is dope. I played a, a good amount of these games. AKA Resident Evil Village Pokemon Sword. I've also played Mario Mortal Kombat 11. I played Gold Pony Hawks Pro Skater 1 and 2, the original editions. Uh, I have played uh, Minecraft, of course. I haven't played Mario Kart 8. I know, don't, don't, you know, string me up. And I have played The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. So, that is dope to see. That some of the older games are coming back for Vengeance. But also, uh, some of the, you know, older Nintendo titles are actually in still good development. I'm actually very happy for it. So, hey. Is what it is. You can't really fix the past. 
big pins. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys so much for watching today. Thank you guys so much for listening in on the game news. Hope everyone has had a wonderful day. I hope everyone has been enjoying the gameplay of Midnight Club 3 Double Edition Remix, which has is a really good title to play. So, hey, can't really fix what's not what's not broken. I've been having a lot of fun with this. <laughs> so I'm gonna let you um you know, watch the gameplay as I'm, you know, talking at the end. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I do appreciate you guys joining us. If you guys want to see some more stuff from me on this channel, go and check me out every Wednesday while I'm playing Resident Evil Village. Uh, very soon I'm going to be picking up a new title as well. I'm going to be finishing Resident Evil Village, of course. So, I cannot wait for you guys to see the end. I've actually been done with uh, Resident Evil Village for a little bit now. So I think you guys should check out check out what we have. Because I can guarantee you, you're going to love what you see. So go check out my games every Wednesday. Every Sunday, of course, I play, um, what's it called? Every, every Sunday I do play the gaming news. So if you guys want to uh, check out the gaming news every Sunday, like right now you are, then, again, every Sunday around this exact same time, I will be here. And if you guys want to uh, check out some of the other things I'm doing with Mr. Yimish Tortuga, which you guys have seen um, episode 1 by now, and I believe episode 2 has already went out. Um, if I'm not, then hopefully then uh, it will be up very soon. Um, I've been playing Pokemon Sword with my Tortugian friend. So if you guys want to go check out Pokemon Sword, then I suggest go, not Pokemon Sword, Pokemon Coliseum with me and Mr. Tortuga, then I suggest you guys go check that out. I believe that goes out every Monday, if I'm not mistaken. Monday or Tuesdays, I believe. Again, I don't do the scheduling for um, Pokemon Coliseum. I I believe uh, that is more up to Mr. Tortuga, and it's in, it's in the our schedule somewhere. I just don't. I I, I just don't. <laughs> Anyway, if you guys want to code, check out our all of our lovely creators. They are down in the description down below. They are a lovely bunch of coconuts, so I suggest you go and check them out. They are a lovely bunch of human beings, and they all do some amazing work. If you guys want to go check out somebody that I think uh, really deserves your subscription at the moment, go check out Mr. Chaos 6. Why? Because me and him are at like an arms race with subscriptions at the moment. I believe he's at about 514 at this point, and I'm right now at 517. So me and him are just up there as the biggest subscribers on the channel. If you guys want to go and check out some of our stuff, oh, let's face it, on Twitch, uh, I believe Chaos and uh, Image dominate me. Actually, everyone does at this point. Not Follow bad, me on Twitch, man. please and thank you. Anyway, um, until we're done, ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys so much for listening. I'll see you guys next Sunday for the gaming news. But if you guys want to see me again, again, that's Wednesday, Resident Evil Village. Come and check me out. Anyway, until next time, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys have a lovely day, but it's time for us to end off. Anyway, good gaming, happy hunting, and I'll see all you dragonlings back inside the world of the gaming news. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time for some more gaming and dragon action. Peace.